Did you ever find it? No, I haven't found it yet. Okay. I <laughs> I bought a drone so that I could search for my phone uh, instead of just buying another phone. God, do you, you want to know how I? Could, do Do you want to know how stupid I am? <laughs> do you want to know how I have to fly that drone? I've got to plug a phone. <laughs> You got played. You got played. I got played so. Oh, that's so funny, dude. So not I yeah, just... that's just like double whammy. It's like congratulations, such a moron, you dude. played yourself. Hello and welcome to the second playlist, the rabbit hole. Keep it. Uh, something we were talking about today was your previous experience going through high school, going through woodworking shop class. Um. Just because I know you personally, I know you've done some woodworking in the past. Um, is that something that you're continuing to pursue, even though you're out of high school? Yeah, I mean, it's something that I've <laughs> always pursued sort of uh, on and off o over the years. It's always been a, a sort of side hobby, passion hobby of mine. Um, mm. I never really had much time to pursue it in a more in-depth way that I would like to, you know, to hone it as an actual craft. More of just a, a little hobby not making anything in like a professional format. Um, but yeah, like you had said, just in high school, had sort of shop class and everything like that. Um, as I got out of high school, I sort of pursued it in more creative ways. Um, I have made rings. Um, I've helped make uh, different types of furniture, um, table, uh, Adirondack chair, uh, bedside table, things of that nature. Um, just sort of either in that woodworking class or after the fact. And it's just always been something, something really enjoyable. There's a, there's just something to be said about taking, taking nothing or taking a, any sort of material and then fashioning it into something that is then usable. And honestly, I personally, um, I just love it. It, it's just a lot of fun to sort of shape things and craft things. Something that you can really like dig your teeth or sink your teeth into, really dig in. And I've had a lot of fun with it over the years. Oh, what What about you? Um, I personally don't do a lot of woodworking outside of building a chicken coop or building. Or right now, I'm putting up a run for my rabbits out in uh, my pine trees so that they get a little better quality mm -hmm. of life. Um, so I'm kind of going to be picking your brain for this one because I don't have a lot of creative brain. habits in that sense uh, on account of the one functioning hand. But can you tell mm -hmm. me um, what your favorite project was uh, so far in your little woodworking journey? Yeah, absolutely. So going back to high school, my favorite – I have two. One was mm -hmm. a piece of furniture or two pieces of furniture that I made. I made a uh, – actually, there's three. I made a an Adirondack chair uh, out of Sapella, which is a type of African mahogany. Beautiful wood, beautiful chair. Uh, took me the whole year. Probably one of my favorite builds that I've done, but this is, you know, 10-plus years ago now. Mm -hmm. In that same woodworking class my senior year, I had made uh, a pair of bedside tables out of maple. Those I still use to this day. And um, I actually made uh, I made a pair of rings for myself and my ex um, and actually proposed with it. So that sort of whether it ended well or not, that's another thing. But that is still that still holds a special place in my heart because it was the first time that I had pursued making any sort of jewelry or any sort of finer artsy sort of things. And honestly, I, I would love to get back into it, to be honest. So do you not do you, excuse me, um, do you not do it now um, just because you're Currently, limited on I do time? Not. Yeah, just uh, limited on time. I, you know, previous podcasts we've talked about, you know, I, I commute. I don't have mm -hmm. a lot of free time to myself. The free time that I do have, it's either cooking, playing video games, just sort of unwinding, de-stressing. And even then it's for like an hour before I'm actually like getting ready for bed. Um, yeah. So just lack of time. Uh, lack of material, you know, I don't really have, I don't need a full shop to sort of do the things that I want to do, but it would be nice to have uh, just sort of a designated area and just within 
the confines of an apartment building um, or just a, a duplex, I should say. Um, there's not really any sort of privacy to get that sort of quiet. For me, I have to get into like the mindset that I am, I am setting aside time to do this thing. Mm-hmm. And when I, when I sit down, it's almost meditative, to be honest. But when I sit down and I pursue it, everything else sort of melts away. And then the only thing that I see is what's right in front of me and whatever I'm working on. And in those moments, stress disappears. And so losing that or losing that outlet has also lost me a sort of uh, stress outlet and Mm -hmm. and not being able to pursue that has been um, just because of my time. I wish I could pursue more, to be honest. Do you find that you enjoy creative pursuits like woodworking? Do you... Uh, you enjoy working with your hands. I think you said that already. Yeah. Um, but do mm-hmm. you think like what we're doing right now, would you consider podcasting a uh, creative pursuit? Do you think yes. um, you find the same level of stress reduction that you had with woodworking here, or is it just too new for that? It's different in the sense that like this is 100% a creative pursuit. There is a sort of, meditative flow state sort of 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 a process in regards to how you and I bounce back and forth and and how we go through things i can't really equate the two just because it's just more personal and private when mm-hmm. i'm working on something by myself so gotcha. it's just not the same it, you can't really compare them yeah. but i would say that i would consider podcasting a a creative pursu- a pr- creative pursuit and I do believe, um, I do believe that there is some sort of therapeutic, there is a sort of therapeutic um, process here, just in regards to having conversations, um, talking to you, um, whether it's venting, joking, laughing, however it goes. But I, I definitely, I definitely feel like there's, there are similar, similar creative tendencies involved. Mm-hmm. I got you. Um, so as far as, cause we're just, I'm kind of segueing just into creative pursuits. Welcome to the rabbit hole, by the way. There you go. Um, we're well, just going to talk about We don't really focus about anything. We're just going to go. <laughs> but you know, you're talking about woodworking and the creative pursuit and it's kind of private for you. And I respect that. And I'm just mm-hmm. kind of curious. Do you think in woodworking, it's more of a good stress reliever for you because at the end of it you have an end product that you can hold in your hand um rather than having to review an entire podcast so i don't i don't think that or at least initially without reviewing it like introspectively trying to like figure that out which might take me a little bit of time uh but just right off the top of my head i'm gonna say no um for me personally, when I'm working on something, there's usually an end goal in mind. And so mm-hmm. for me, pursuing that end goal, achieving it, and then like that sense of accomplishment is sort of what drives me. Whereas with the podcast, there's that same level of commitment in the sense that, but there's there's no end goal. This is sort of an ongoing creative process. So it, I just have to look at it differently because it's not like, all right, we're going to 50 episodes. Mm-hmm. And so until 50 episodes, like this is what we're going to do. This is just sort of open-ended. And so I have to look at it in the sense that we're not really, we're not really putting any sort of restrictions on ourselves. We're, we're letting the creative process take it wherever we want it to go. So we can pivot and change and modify whatever we have to do in the moment. Whereas with woodworking, it's very strict. It's very structured. I'll use the ring that I made as an example. There are steps. There are processes. Get the piece of wood. You have to drill into the wood. You have to figure out the right size of the ring. You get the size of the ring, you have to drill the hole out in the middle so you actually have the ring shape. Once you've drilled that out, you can't go too close because you're going to have to sand. You have to make sure that there's enough space and there's enough extra material so that you can actually get a nice finished product you have to decide what types of woods you're using i had done uh white oak and antler so i actually had a bone uh, a wood and bone ring and so 
we had to epoxy or I had to epoxy those together. I made the rings with uh, with Dave, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, so when when we were making the rings, um, he kind of did his thing, I did my thing. So we were actually together when we did it, but we just sort of were like comparing notes. It was less yeah. like I'm helping him, he's helping me. But we had to epoxy it together. We had to um, figure out the actual measurements. Once we actually got everything set up, we had to sand it down. We had to make sure it fit. We had to put the varnish on it, or in this case, it was just beeswax. Um, and so there's just there's a, a very structured process to follow with there being an end product or there being a sense of accomplishment once you know you're done. And so I think pursuing that sort of that sort of structure as well as that the process itself is almost as rewarding as the end goal. There, there's a therapeutic repetition in going through. I don't know, you probably have, but it, I don't know. A lot of people don't like to sand. It's boring. It's annoying. It's frustrating. I love to sand. Um, taking your time, going through all the different grits, um, trying to make it as smooth as it can, or, you know, smooth as butter, smooth as, sk- as baby skin, whatever you want to say. Um, those sort of repetitive tasks are therapeutic. And so anytime I get the chance to do things of that nature, I, I usually go out of my way to do so. Now, <clears throat> do you think just the idea of having a a task and having a simple way of executing that task is the therapeutic aspect of it? Or do you view so. the therapy? Okay, gotcha. So Yeah, no, you, you, would... you hit that right on the head. You don't even have to go any further. That is exactly it. It it's gotcha. it, it just because it's simple because it's repetitive, uh, it just it sort of like scratches all the right parts of the brain. Uh, I do have mm. ADD or ADHD, whatever you want to call it, and um, so things of that nature. When I can hyperfixate or when I can actually focus on things of that uh, like that, um, it, it's very therapeutic. It's very relaxing to me. Gotcha, because you know I do the majority of the editing, which is very minimal for what we're doing right now and i'm hoping to get more into it and it is those repetitive tasks that absolutely drive me nuts and oh no yeah on top of that and i'm kind of a little bit of a perfectionist in that i absolutely do let perfect be the enemy of good um in fact (laughs) i let perfect wage war on good every day um so I I do enjoy I video see editing. A little doodle of perfect and good just fighting each other. It's it's just you know I'm learning Da Vinci. I just got my computer rebuilt. You know it's just one of those things that I want it to be therapeutic, but I can just, just never have it good enough that I'm comfortable with the end product being put out there. You know I'm still editing my other channel's first video because I just it's not good enough. You know, I want it to be more. The and... thing is, it never, it never will be. And you have to accept the fact that, especially if you want to be a content creator in general, because that's technically what we're doing now. We are creating and putting content out there. Mm-hmm. It will not always be good. In fact, sometimes it might be more bad than good frequently (laughs) you know and and until you do it enough until you you have that repetition and that sort of mastery that comes with time you just have to put it out there i'm sorry i I can't no it has to be good enough can't i can't do it it, it, you'll you'll never put out that first episode i i I (laughs) look at it you'll you'll be reviewing that episode for a year I'm just like there ha there there's a better sound effect here. No, this is too boring. Like I can't. I I physically am unable to hit that render button. Like I I just can't yeah. do it. I listen, I understand because when um I know you know, I don't know if we've talked about it, but I had I had streamed on Twitch. Mm-hmm. Um I had been playing like Trackmania. I was I was streaming maybe 2 3 4 times a week or whatever. And when I first started out, 100% uh, perfect was the enemy of good. I felt like the lighting needed to be correct. I feel like the fucking mic needed to be right. I needed to be funny. I needed to be different. Like I needed to be wearing the right clothes. Like just all these different things, and all these different factors. And I think maybe like two, three weeks in, one of the people who had uh, become a regular was like, "Buddy, just just play the game. 
Like, you're good. Like, we don't care. Like, you're funny when you just talk and play the game. You don't have to worry about all this other shit. And it just stuck with me. I was like, oh, fuck, you're right. And once I had that sort of eye-opening, like, oh, I can just do the thing, and people who like it will then follow or will come, um, that is when I actually started to enjoy streaming. And that's when I started to actually get into it, and it, and it stopped feeling like a chore, and it stopped feeling like a job. It was just having fun. And that's when I started streaming like five, six hours a night. Um, just put the damn video out. <laughs> no, no, I'm just I am absolutely just still there. there. Because like Ed, <laughs> I am I am absolutely one hundred percent thankful for everyone in our focus groups who took the time to watch our Burt Flapjack couple first videos. And we're gonna be putting a lot more Burt Flapjacks out there, so don't worry about that. But I I wanted them to be so brutal. I was expecting like this is garbage never talk to me again in fact our <laughs> friendship is retroactively ended i stopped knowing yeah. you a year ago like that's what <laughs> i was expecting when i asked them to review this and i kind of yeah. half of me wanted that like i was just like tell me yeah, what's wrong so that i can you fix crave it. it you and crave you crave like, that negativity i do and it's like i was i was completely disappointed that we got positive feedback with actionable information on how to improve our podcast and half of me Go is figure. just like i you're you're lying to me like there's something no. wrong you're too polite no. to tell me like no, there's I there's something there it's the strokes it, it is it's the brain damage <laughs> like i i it's it's, just it, it it's the dane bramage <laughs> it's it's just it's it's undermining me it's taking me out at the knees it's just like you'll never be good enough I look in the mirror and it's not even me. It's just like a brain yeah. that's just like all <laughs> scarred up. It's just like I know who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold the fucking <laughs> hold the wanted photo up. No, that's so funny. But no, for real though, like I, there is something to be said though. Is there also like a sense of is there a sense of fear involved with putting that video out because you don't feel like it's perfect? To be honest with you, I'm more scared of this than I am the other one because my face isn't even on that one. You know, I just got <laughs> coop cam. There. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just coop cam coop over cam. there. I, I love that. That's why you got to do it. People just want to see the fucking chickens. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, half, no, half the real, reason I, video out. I... I will. Don't don't worry. Like I'm Now that I've got everything fixed, I'm actually being able to put some work You're into ready. it. But a lot of the stuff that stopped me was losing my phone because my phone was like yeah. my primary media transfer source. Like I could just be inside and be with my son and do some work on it. And now I'm using an old like 2014 Google Nexus. And I, that's I like I just mowed three acres today because that's how I how far I fall. And I'm just like, I don't even care if I run over the thing at this point. I need to I find mean, it. it is. Yeah. Did you ever find it? No, I haven't found it yet. You know, I, I I'm kind of a, I'm kind of an idiot. Uh, how how many? We're 18 minutes in. I'm kind of a fucking idiot. Um, I, I bought a drone so that I could search for my phone. Uh, instead of just buying another phone. Uh, because as previously said, I'm an idiot. Um, and I'm just like, wow, I can also get good content. <laughs> that i can put on my channel oh my god do you, you want to know how i can, do, do you want to know how stupid i am do you want to know how i have to fly that drone i've got to plug a phone <laughs> <laughs> it's like dude i am such a moron uh, just and like got, i was looking oh at god, like you, you know played. You got played. i got played so hard because i was just oh, i was looking shit. at like drones with screens so that i could fly it and oh, see what's god. going on and of I'm course trying. instead of buying like the mavic because i'm just like <laughs> i don't want to spend that much money i bought the off-brand ruko so and like on the picture it looks like it was all one thing no it's a phone i i really am and i suffer because of it oh shit that's so funny dude so not I'm yeah that's just like double whammy it's like congratulations such a moron, you played dude. yourself and it, it's just oh, like wow god. man as soon as i find my phone i can actually use this thing but by the yeah. time i find my phone it's not even gonna work 
Correct. <laughs> Holy shit, that's so funny. Oh my lord. Dude. Oh, this was good. I like that. I should actually do this for like the actual podcast. Right? Uh, <laughs> just just meme. All right, everybody. Well, thank you that's for uh, taking this trip down the rabbit hole with us. I promise you we will do this again. And we will Absolutely. see you next time. Later, guys.